Dot motion animation is a technique that's been around since the earliest days of the movies, when filmmakers first realized you could take a bunch of still images of objects, and if you move them just a little bit in between frames, it would create the illusion that they come to life. With the success of the Lego movies and other big budget projects, stop motion is bigger than ever. But you don't need big money or a lot of equipment to try out this amazing filmmaking technique for yourself. Hi, my name is Andrew Tomek. I'm an Ottawa elementary school teacher and the founder of Chromeworks. Today I'll be showing you how fun and easy it is to make your own stop motion masterpiece. Stop motion is a great introduction to filmmaking for kids of all ages. To get started, you don't need actors or sets or even a script. Just point a camera at your favorite toy, household object, or a lump of clay, and you're off. To get started, we're going to need a few things. Firstly, we need a toy or piece of clay or household object that we can manipulate on the table here. I picked this knight because he's a handsome fellow and his arms swivel and he has nice big flat feet that will stop him from falling over as we slide him across the table. So he's a really good candidate. Secondly, you're going to need a flat surface to film on. You can decorate it or paint it. I've tried, done this with construction paper, for example. But you're going to need something that you can film on top of. And thirdly, you're going to need a camera, preferably with a computer attached to it. Now, you can use iPads or um, Android tablets or almost anything you want. But I'm um, focusing on Chromebooks today. So this is my Chromeworks Chromebook that has a couple of special features. Most importantly, the camera pivots and swivels around like so. And that enables you to ch adjust the height of the camera and change angles and do a lot of fancy directing moves that you might not be able to do with a normal Chromebook. Typically, Chromebooks have a camera that's fixed in this direction which creates a problem when you're filming because you have to film over the keyboard in order to get the shot. There's still ways to do it and there's a few fancy setups that you can do that uh, avoid that problem. Another solution might be to get a webcam like this one. Now not all of them work with Chromebooks so you're going to have to be careful when you buy it to uh, confirm that it's compatible with Chromebooks. So the software we're going to use to record our movie is called Stop Motion Animator. It's available for free on the Chrome Web Store. Um, I've tried a few other apps for Chromebooks and this one is by far the most reliable and it has the virtue of being free. So we're ready to start shooting our animation. Now there's a capture button in the software that you can use to take pictures, but the easier way is simply by hitting the space bar. I'm going to film once by touching the button. And now watch what happens when I lift this character up. There's a ghostly after image of him that's left over on the screen. That's called an onion skin and it's a tool that animators use to try and track where their characters are when they're moving around. If I pick this guy up or he falls over and I want to reposition him, I'm going to want to know where he was in the previous frame of animation so that I can place him in the proper position next time. So we use that onion skin all the time and are checking it to make sure that our character is in the proper location. So we're going to go on and shoot a few more frames of animation. Notice that we're moving very slowly. One of the big rookie mistakes that new animators make is being impatient and trying to move their characters too far. If you're trying to move your character any more than a centimeter or so in between movements, then it's going to look far less realistic. So you want to take lots and lots of photos and have all of them be just very, very subtly different from each other. Now if by chance you make a mistake, and I'm sure you will, and end up putting your hand into the frame as you've done here, that's something that can really um, 
break the reality of your movie and it's something you should try and get rid of and catch right away if it happens. So to fix that, all you have to do is click on the undo button and it will get rid of that last frame of animation and then you can just carry on from there. At any point along the way you can stop and hit the play button and watch your movie up to that point. So once you're done recording your movie, the software gives you the option to add a quick and dirty audio track. There's a button here that says record audio and when I press it in a moment it's going to give me a countdown. Three, two, one, and then I can speak directly into the microphone and do a little voice track to go along with my movie. Now remember that on these Chromebooks the microphone is attached to the camera which is facing away from me. So I want to spin it around so the microphone's facing me and let's try hitting the button. Three, two, one. Attack! All right, now we can play the film back and hopefully the audio track will be attached. Let's give it a try. <laughs> Beautiful. Now this option doesn't give you a lot of flexibility. You, it's gonna be very difficult to add music or sound effects, though I have seen um, kids holding their phones up to their cameras and trying to play audio effects that way. A better solution if you want something more elaborate is to load the entire file into a video editor and then you can manually add sound effects, music, and all the other special effects that you want to afterwards. My students have done some fantastic work over the years, but getting really good at stop motion takes a little time and experimentation. If you want to speed up that learning curve, you'll want to avoid some of these common mistakes that often mess up amateur filmmakers. Here's my list of the top 10 rookie mistakes that beginners make on their first stop motion projects. Number 10 is breaking the fourth wall. Now this is a filmmaking expression that basically means doing something that deliberately shows the audience that what you're doing is fake. In this example you can see that the filmmaker has pointed the camera in such a way that you can see what's happening in the background. You can even see me teaching other kids how to do stop motion. Definitely a no-no. Number nine is forgetting to tell a story. I think a lot of kids get so excited about making movies that they don't really think about how all the different pieces connect to each other. And you can see that in this film where it's almost impossible to tell what's really going on. Number eight is shooting from too far away. You can see in this example that the camera is so far off and the image is so fuzzy it's hard to tell what's really going on. <gasps> Number seven is shooting too few frames of animation. Now a typical stop motion movie that's anything more than a few minutes long is gonna have thousands or even tens of thousands of frames of animation. If you took 10 or 15 pictures and you shrug and say you're done, then you really need to go back and work harder. Number six is accidentally moving the backdrop. Look at this example where the Lego plates are supposed to be solid ground but they're wiggling almost constantly like a ship on the ocean. Putting a little tape or clay on the bottom of the Lego plates will stop it from moving around as you adjust the figures. Number five is accidentally moving the camera. Now there are times when you're gonna actually want to move the camera to zoom in or out, but when you accidentally jostle the camera, it really ruins the realism of your shot. That's especially true if you try to hold your camera with your hands like these guys did. It's a horrible idea. Number four is moving things too quickly. In the best stop motion movies, all the characters move in tiny, tiny little increments for every frame of animation. If you get impatient and try to move your characters too far like these filmmakers did, you end up with characters who seem to magically teleport across the screen. I actually had to slow this film down dramatically just so that you could see what was going on. Here's the film at its original speed. 
Number three is playing around with the speed slider. At the bottom of your screen in stop motion animator is a little slider that moves your film from slow to fast playback. Now if your movie is too short and you want it to be longer, you might be tempted to drag that slider all the way over to the slow position to try and slow down the playback. But what that actually does is create less frames of animation per second of film, which is going to make your movie look slow and sluggish and choppy. If you're going to move that slider at all, move it to the right to make the film faster, not slower. The faster the frame rate, the more realistic your animation is going to look. Number two is making your own titles. So often students will want to add a little bit of additional information like meanwhile or the end in text form on their movie, especially kids who watched a little bit too much Spongebob. Five minutes later. These kids made a really fantastic little spy film, but they ruined it by adding text titles in scribbled handwriting on a piece of paper. If you really want to add text titles, you're going to have to bring your program into a video editor where you can put really professional looking titles onto it. And the number one most cringe-worthy mistake kids can make on their stop motion movie is, drum roll please. That's right, putting your hand in the frame. I can't count the number of times I've seen this in a stop motion movie. Some kids don't even know that they're supposed to not have their hands in the frame, but it really spoils the realism and makes the film look fake. If you accidentally put your hand into the frame, just hit the undo button until it disappears. Oh, won't somebody please think of the children? So now that you know the do's and don'ts of stop motion animation, it's your turn to give it a whirl. You can do stop motion with toys, with Lego, with clay, with household objects, and even with your own body. The only limit is your imagination. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the movies. Chrome work.